Hello and welcome. In this video we are going to discuss integration by parts. This is a method for integrating somewhat difficult integrals. It's usually used to integrate a product of two different types of functions. So you might have, for example, a logarithmic function multiplied by a power function, or you might have a exponential function multiplied by a trigonometric function. So usually product of two different types of functions. Although integration by parts can also be used for other types of integrals. We are going to see several examples, but first let's have a look at the method itself and also some of the background or where it comes from. The method of integration by parts is based on the product rule for differentiation. Solving or rearranging for f of x times g prime of x gives f of x times g prime of x is equal to the difference of the other two. Integrating both sides of this equation, we get the following. Notice that the integral of the derivative of f of x times g of x is just f of x times g of x. This means that if you have the integral of f of x times g prime of x, then this is equal to f of x times g of x subtract the integral of f prime of x times g of x. And this is called the integration by parts formula. We can rewrite this formula by making the following substitutions. If you let u equals to f of x, so that informally du would be f prime of x dx, and also we let dv be g prime of x dx, so that v is equal to g of x, then the formula becomes the integral of u dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. This is another way of writing the integration by parts formula. Notice that we would start with an integral of u dv, and this transforms the problem into integrating v du. We are hoping that this new integral is easier than the original integral, and we will see this in many of the examples to follow. To integrate by parts, you should strategically choose u and v, and then apply this formula. Here are a number of remarks. Integration by parts is often used to integrate a product of two functions. However, it can also be used for other types of integrals. When you choose u and v, you should try to choose u so that it's easy to differentiate, and you should try to ensure that dv is easy to integrate. You are also hoping that the new integral, the integral of v du, is easier to compute than the original integral, the integral of u dv. If the integral on the right-hand side ends up being harder than the original integral, then maybe you should go back and try a different u and dv. Sometimes you might need to try several different combinations of u and dv before finding the right one. Let's have a look at an example. Here we have the integral of x multiplied by e to the power of x, so we have a product. First we need to choose our u and dv. Here we'd like to choose u equals to x and dv equals to e to the power of dx. This means that u is going to be easy to differentiate, the derivative of x is just 1, and e to the power of x would be easy to either integrate or differentiate. So v is equal to e to the power of x. Using the integration by parts formula, we end up with the original integral equals to x times e to the power of x subtract the integral of e to the power of x times dx. The integral of e to the power of x dx is just e to the power of x plus c, of course. Notice that the new integral, the integral of e to the power of x dx, is easier than the original integral in the question. Here is our second example. First we need to choose our u and our dv. This time we are going to choose u is equal to ln x, because ln x would have been very difficult to integrate. So we would rather choose this as our u, which means we have to differentiate it. And that we can do. The derivative of ln x is 1 over x dx. The remaining part of the integrand is x squared dx, so therefore this is our dv. Integrating this, we end up with v equals to one-third x cube. Now using the integration by parts formula, we get the integral of x squared ln x dx is equal to one-third x cube ln x, subtract the integral of one-third x cube times one over x dx. We can simplify this integral to be just the integral of one-third x squared dx, which is very easy to evaluate. The final answer is one-third x cubed ln x 
subtract 1 over 9 x cubed. And don't forget to add plus c at the end. Here we have the integral of x squared e to the power of x dx. First we have to choose our u and dv. This time we will let u equals to x squared because differentiating this will make it easier whereas integrating x squared would have made it more complicated. On the other hand, e to the power of x will be the same regardless if you integrate or differentiate. Once we've made our choice, we just compute the derivative of u to give us du equals 2x dx, and the integral of dv gives us v is equal to e to the power of x. Now we insert all these things into the integration by parts formula, and we end up having to integrate e to the power of x 2x dx. This integral is still not trivial. On the other hand, it is simpler than the original integral in the question. So I think we are going in the right direction. Let's try to use integration by parts again to evaluate this new integral. We have to choose a new u and a new dv. This time u will be 2x and dv is e to the power of x dx which means du is 2 times dx and v is equal to e to the power of x. Again, inserting the integration by parts formula, we are replacing the integral of e to the power of x 2x dx with 2x e to the power of x subtract the integral of 2 e to the power of x dx. Multiplying out these brackets, we end up having to evaluate the integral of 2 e to the power of x dx, which is just 2 e to the power of x plus a constant. Here we have the integral of e to the power of x times cos x dx. In other words, an exponential function multiplied by a trigonometric function. In this case, both of the functions are easy to integrate and easy to differentiate, so it doesn't matter how we choose our u and our dv. For example, we can choose u equals to e to the power of x and dv equals to cos x dx which means that du is e to the power of x dx, and the integral of cos x is sin x, so v is equal to sin x. Now we insert this into the integration by parts formula. We end up with the integral of e to the power of x times sin x dx. This is not really any simpler than the original integral. On the other hand, it's not more difficult either, so let's try using integration by parts again, and let's see what happens. Let's choose u to be the same again, u is equal to e to the power of x, and dv this time is sine x dx. This means du is e to the power of x dx, and v is the integral of sine x, which is negative cos x. Now we replace the integral e to the power of x sine x dx by the integration by parts formula, negative e to the power of x cos x plus the integral of e to the power of x cos x dx. Simplifying these brackets we get e to the power of x sine x plus e to the power of x cos x subtract the integral of e to the power of x cos x dx. Let's summarize what we've found so far. We have found that the integral of e to the power of x cos x dx is equal to e to the power of x sine x plus e to the power of x cos x minus the integral of e to the power of x cos x dx. That means that the new integral that we have is exactly the same as the original integral in the question. This means that we can add this integral to both sides of this equation, meaning that we have 2 times the original integral equal to e to the power of x sine x plus e to the power of x cos x. So to find a final answer, all we need to do is to divide both sides by 2. So the integral e to the power of x cos x dx is equal to a half e to the power of x sin x plus a half times e to the power of x cos x, and always plus a constant since we are dealing with an indefinite integral. To summarize, to find this answer we had to integrate by parts twice to get back to the same original integral as in the question, and then add that to both sides. Now we have seen a number of examples of using integration by parts, and as you can see, some of them can be fairly complicated and quite long. Uh, this means that, if possible, you should try to use another simpler method. For example, if you see a substitution that might work, you should probably try that first before trying a longer method, such as integration by parts. 
In all the examples we've seen so far, we have seen indefinite integrals. But integration by parts can also be used for definite integrals. So let's have a look at how that might be done. Here is the integration by parts formula stated in terms of a definite integral from a to b. If you have an integral from a to b of f of x times g prime of x dx, that means that the new integral will also be evaluated from a to b. It also means that you have to evaluate f of x times g of x on the interval from a to b. We can rewrite this formula in terms of the u and dv notation, and the formula becomes as follows. Notice that you have to integrate each part from a to b, and also evaluate u times v on the interval from a to b. Here is an example of a definite integral where we can use integration by parts. As usual, the first thing we should do is to choose our u and dv. This time we will let u equals to ln of 2x, because ln 2x would be very difficult to integrate, so we would rather have it as our u. This means that dv is the remaining part, which is x to the power of 4 dx. Once we've made our choice, we can compute du is equal to 1 over 2x times the inside derivative, which is 2, dx. This simplifies to become 1 over x dx. Integrating x to the power of 4, we get v equals x to the power of 5 over 5. Now let's insert this into the integration by parts formula. So we end up with ln 2x times x to the power of 5 over 5, evaluated from a half to 1. Subtract the integral from a half to 1 of x to the power of 5 over 5, multiplied by 1 over x dx. Simplifying this, we can take 1 over 5 out in front of the square bracket, since it's just a constant. So we have x to the power of 5 ln 2x, evaluated at a half to 1. Subtract the integral, we can also take 1 over 5 out in front, because it's a constant. And we end up with the integral from a half to 1 of x to the power of 4 dx. And this integral is just x to the power of 5 over 5. So now all we need to do is evaluate these things at a half and 1. When evaluating the first one here, we have to first insert a 1. So we get 1 times ln 2. And then subtract and insert a half. So we get a half to the power of 5 times ln 1. In the second part, we have to first insert 1, so we get 1 to the power of 5, subtract, inserting a half, so we get a half to the power of 5. Simplifying this, we see that ln of 1 is equal to 0, so all we're left with is 1 over 5 ln 2, subtract 1 over 25 times 1 minus 1 over 32, which simplifies as 1 over 5 ln 2 times 1 over 25 times 31 over 32. In other words, 1 over 5 ln 2 subtract 31 over 800, which is the final answer. Notice that the final answer to this last example was a number, not involving the variable x in this case. If your final answer to a definite integral involves x, then you, that means you made a mistake. Most likely you forgot to evaluate one of the parts that needed to be evaluated at a and b. So now we've seen a number of examples of using integration by parts on both definite integrals and indefinite integrals. And I hope that you found the video useful. But as usual, the only way to really understand a mathematical method or technique is to practice it many times yourself. And for this reason we put together some practice problems for you to try. So good luck with the practice problems and thank you for watching.